Surface Finish Symbols Explained. This is a little bit lengthy of a video, it's approximately 18 minutes. All of the information that you're going to need to write your CFQ that pertains to surface finish is contained within this video. Please take a moment to like and subscribe, it's free and it'll help me out. If you got this symbol on a drawing, would you know what it means? Well, by the end of this video, you absolutely will know what it means. And I will go through this step by step at the end of the video. Okay, let's get started right now. Warning, viewer discretion is advised. This video is made for apprentices and may contain scenes that are over explained and may not be appropriate for your skill level. Before we get started into what all the symbols mean, we have to know what we're actually measuring. We are going to go through and discuss each measurement name and parameter. Roughness width is basically spacing of repetitive surface irregularities. So in other words, the tooling marks that your tool makes. Roughness height is basically the height or the depth of your cut. And some older tradesmen will also call this the scallop depth. Lay or lathe direction is the predominant surface pattern. So basically the marks that your tooling makes on the actual part. We're going to be going into this a little bit more in depth later on in the video. Roughness width is the distance parallel to the normal surface between successive peaks and ridges. Wave height is the distance between the peak and the valley. Sampling length, roughness width cutoff. Basically this sounds a lot more difficult than what it is, but it's just the distance that we're measuring over. And later on in this video, when I uh, do a demo using the surface roughness tester, it's the amount that the probe travels in and out. Flaw is an irregularity that occurs in a surface due to cracks, blow holes, ridges, scratches. Basically anything that's not in the machining pattern. There is no finish symbols for flaws. A special note should be included on the drawing where no flaws are permitted. Typical ways of obtaining surface roughness measurements is RA, RQ, and RZ. And here's a brief explanation of each. RA is probably the most popular we're going to use. RA is the roughness height. I'm going to butcher this one. Arithmical average. So basically what happens if you take a look at A, B, C, D, E, uh, all these lines have heights or distances. So basically what happens is you add them all up. In this case, if you take a look, it equals 108. So you take 108 and there's 18 spots. So you take the average of them and it's 6. So that's how we calculate the RA. And in this case, with these measurements, the RA would be 6. To help clarify things, RA, RQ, and RZ is just a setting that you're going to be using on the surface roughness tester. And it will do the equation for you. RQ is the root mean square, so roughness height. Just like on the RA, we have 18 lengths. So what we're going to do is we're going to square each length, and then we, when we total them up, we're going to get the square root from it. So in this case, RA for the same measurement was 6. RQ is 6.4. RZ is the measurement of the five largest peaks compared to the five lowest valleys over your sample length. Material removal symbols. Identical surface texture all over. This is one of the newest surface texture symbols and you probably don't have it in your textbook. But that little circle around the bent elbow means all over. Surface may be produced by any method. When this symbol is by itself without any accompanying symbol like a lay symbol, it can be produced by any method meaning any type of machining. Material removal required. This symbol is usually accompanied by other symbols such as lay. Material removal prohibited. There are multiple reasons why they use this symbol, but one of the more popular ones is that surface is a datum for internal reference dimension. Basic surface texture symbols. Roughness average value. This can be stated in micro inches or micrometers or roughness grade. Using the visual comparator, you can see on the top, which is micro inches, and on the bottom, which is micrometers. Minimum and maximum roughness average value. This can be stated in micro inches, micrometers, or roughness grade as well. By using the visual comparator gauge, if you take a look, the red would be the minimum, and the blue would be the maximum roughness. So in other words, as long as you're between these two finishes, your part would be approved. Machining allowance be stated in inches or millimeters. So this means that they left material on this surface to be removed. Usually on castings 
or on material that have to have a certain amount removed off to prevent warpage, such as cold rolled steel. Maximum wave height can be stated in inches or millimeters. Basically, it is the height of the wave between the peak and the valley. Maximum wave spacing can be measured in inches or millimeter. It comes after maximum wave height. And what it is, is the measurement of the wave highest peak to the next highest peak. Roughness sampling length. Basically, this is the length that you set your surface roughness tester up to measure across. The minimum length, if not stated, will be 30 thousandths of an inch. Lay symbol, the direction of the predominant surface pattern. Lay symbol perpendicular. Lay perpendicular to the line representing the surface to which the symbol is applied. Lay symbol parallel. Lay parallel to the line representing the surface to which the symbol is applied. Lay symbol radial. Lay approximately radial relative to the center of the surface to which the symbol is applied. A lot of older tradesmen will refer to this as a Blanchard ground symbol. Lay symbol angular. Crossed in two slant directions relative to a plane of projection of the view in which the symbol is used. Basically, it looks like the cross section of a honed cylinder. Lay symbol multidirectional. An example of this finish would be, let's say, the bottom of a pocket that was machined by an end mill. A bunch of cross swirls, lay symbol, non-directional. This is usually produced by an EDM machine or a sandblaster. Lay symbol circular, approximately circular relative to the center of the surface to which the symbol is applied. This symbol surface is most commonly associated with facing on a lathe. Conversion charts. Take a look at this conversion chart. An RA in micro inches of 8 is equivalent to an RA in micrometers of 0.2 and a roughness grade of 4. Surface roughness comparison chart. This can be a little bit difficult to explain, so please bear with me for a few moments. Sometimes an engineer on a drawing will not put the actual finish that they want. They will turn around, they will say they would require a mill finish. So a mill finish in micro inches is a standard between 250 and 32, so in the yellow. Now the possible parameters is 1000 all the way down to 8, but the acceptable parameters is 250 to 32. So therefore, if an engineer puts mill finish required, he wants a milled finish with a finish variable between 250 and 32 micro inches. Visual surface finish comparator. Let's talk about the visual surface roughness comparator. And that's what we have right here. Um, this guy's an awesome visual tool or visual reference for apprentices because it allows them to be able to see right away what type of finish they're getting while they're machining, which is kind of cool. Um, these are not to be touched. Everyone wants to touch them. Oh, I'm running my fingernail up and down them. You're not going to get a super true reading by running your fingernail up and down because they have a bit of a coating on them. Although this guy's nickel, made out of nickel because it's a nickel plated process, how they actually make these. Um, this visual comparator here, uh, if you look really closely right here, there's actually a hair stuck inside of this sample. How I know this is because I ran the surface roughness tester over top and I wasn't getting an accurate reading for what the actual specimen was saying. Now that doesn't mean that it's out, it just means that there's a slight coating on top of it to protect it. But the visualization works great for these guys. Some of the tools that we use to check, um, you can use a microscope. A microscope's good for a couple of different reasons. Because you can project it onto a large screen, which works great. And you can also record the image that you have. If you're in a hurry, an eye loop works great. You can also pick up a pair of these funky glasses. Uh, they work great. You can use different focuses and they have their own light source. And you also have the good old fashioned trusty magnifying glass with lights. I like using this one myself because it's just a little bit easier. So let's take a look at a specimen here. So I turn around and I have a block that's been ground. So I want to see what this actually is. So what I would do is I would hold my piece up against here, I would go down to the ground symbol here and I would look at it and I would say, hmm, I only have two options for ground image or ground surfaces here. I got a six and I got a 16, or sorry, I got an eight and a 16. 
neither of them are as fine as what I have ground on here. So it's going to be less than an eight. So let's turn around and use this visual comparator here. And if I look here, I have a three and a two and a four. So I got uh, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And I take a look here. I have to go this way here. And I would almost say between the four and the three, and it's so close it could even be a two. So I'm gonna say between this range right in here. So how do I know what it actually is for sure? Because this is only a visual reference. It's a reference tool. So what I would do is I would take this guy here, set it on here, go to start. Now you see this guy moving inward, then it's going to move outward. Three, four, uh, three, seven. Let's look at our conversion chart. 3.7 converts over to a roughness grade of three. And that looks basically what we have, a, a number three roughness grade. Okay, let's try another sample. Okay, so what we have here is the inside of a hard drive. This is a hard drive disc. Um, let's give it a try and see what we have here for our visual comparator. So we go through and we find our grinding here. We got the eight on the grind. So if we take a look, we can see clearly that this finish is much greater than this finish here. And then they only get rougher up to that point. So it's better than an eight. So let's take a look at our other chart here this down here um, I'm gonna say it's better than a two as well so let's measure it and see what it actually comes out to be Point four. So basically this finishes off the chart. It's point 0.4 and the closest in micro inches is one. I did a couple off screen tests and an L2 lap is pretty much the same as what we have. Profilometer or surface roughness tester. So why do I keep calling this a surface roughness tester? Um, because that's what Michitoyo calls it. This also comes with a precision reference specimen. Uh, if you looked at this, we used this earlier today when we calibrated the machine. For extra references and zeroing and changing the different parameters, uh, we use these buttons here. When we flip it over, if we push backwards, this guy will be released. And we can also unplug this. Now you can mount this to a surface gauge or any other type of piece of equipment. Then use this extension cord to go from here back into the unit. So 119.7 and this guy's supposed to be 120, so 0 0.3 off. When you have one of these electronic units, it's really easy to switch between RA, RZ, and RQ just by switching the parameters. Surface roughness tester, skidded versus probe. But what I want to talk more about is the stylus on the end here. Um, if you take a look, you see that there's a tiny little needle sticking out the end there. That tiny little needle is actually what feeds back information into the system. But this is called a skidded type probe because it actually rides on the bump that's here. 
this can only check flat surfaces. It can't really check tapered surfaces or round surfaces. Now, if you have just the individual stylus sticking out, a non-skidded type, what happens is you can check round surfaces, tapers, and a few other things. Uh, but with this style, you're limited to uh, only checking flat work pieces. Surface roughness tester setup. It is important to be perpendicular when you're setting this up. If not, you'll get cosine error. And if you're unsure of what cosine error is, check out my YouTube video, Cosine Error Explained. With a skidded probe, it is very important to be parallel to the surface to which you're checking. Not so much with a probe style, but with a skidded, it is extremely important. Checking the surface finish of a circular object. It is not possible to do this with a skidded style. It is possible to do it with a probe though. Checking the surface finish of a groove. It may not be possible to do this with a skidded stylist due to space restraints compared to a probe. There are many different ways of measuring surface finish, including this optical profiler. There's also lasers. I almost feel silly taking this up because I know that just by going through this, you have an understanding of how to actually answer this question. But let's go through it anyways. Let's work our way from left to right. Let's start with the 60 thousandths of an inch position it means machining allowance. I am required to take 60 thou off of this surface. Next up is 63. In this position it's RA. My roughness average needs to be 63 or better. Here's what a roughness average of 63 looks like using a roughness comparator. Next up is the 3 thou on the top. The maximum wave height can be 3 thou. So the depth from the peak to the valley can only be 3 thou in depth. Next up is the 5 on the end. The 5 is really 5 thou, and that's the maximum wave spacing. So it's from peak to peak, can only be 5 thou. Next up, it looks like an equal sign on the bottom. That equal sign is the lay symbol for parallel. The machine finish is parallel to the surface that this is applied to. Next up is the 30 thou on the bottom right hand side. This is the roughness sample length. As shown earlier in this video, you can set the sample length using the surface roughness tester. I'm glad to see that you enjoyed the video. If you want to see other great videos, check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. If you have any comments or questions or ideas for future videos, please leave them in the comments section below. If you have not already, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Thanks for watching the video and have a great night.